I'm going to show you how to set up a looper inside of Ableton to be able to do some spontaneous improvisation, live looping type stuff. You can of course use the session view instead and record into your clip slots, but this is going to be focusing on the looper. So first we're going to start with brand new blank Ableton thing here, right? So we've got, we started a new project and we're going to set this up. First thing is I highly recommend having something that has multiple outputs. So I have four outputs on my audio interface. So that audio interface means that right now I can send them out to the same stereo pair, or I can send my master out to a different one. So I'm going to send my master out to three, four, and I'm going to listen to stuff on one, two. So my cue out is one, two, and that lets me, if I click my metronome over here, this metronome uh, will now, I will be able to hear it. I can hear it, but you can't. So that lets me stay in time and I can turn it off once I've got a loop going if I want. I'll show you if I send this to my main out, then you should be able to hear it. Now you can hear it, right? But we don't want the audience to necessarily hear that. So that's why I highly recommend that. If you don't have additional outputs like that, then you can't do that. Since I do, I'm also going to set this up as a monitor here, and I'm going to take audio and send it to that one to two output, which again is my monitor. And I'm going to take audio from the master and say, take it from the master, I'll monitor this. Um, we're going to go ahead and put a limiter on my master just to try and play nice as I do this. All right, so I've got my monitor set up where now I'm left it always monitoring what's coming in here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an audio input. So I'm going to take, I currently have my guitar plugged into three. So I'm going to take my audio set this to auto and record arm. And so now when I hit my guitar, you should be able to hear something, but it's very soft. I'm going to put some presets on here since that's just a direct line in. So I've got this set up to be able to pull onto this, which I'll call guitar. And I'll put this on, which has some guitar rig things on it. And you can now hear. Lovely, we've got a guitar. So the simple setup for Looper is you take Looper and you can find it. If you can't find it there here, I've just put it in my favorites so it's easy for this demo, but you can find it under audio effects. Um, should be able to look up Loop. And there it is, Looper. All right, so Looper now, you can set the number of bars you loop. You can have it try and figure it out. I generally prefer setting the number of bars. And then this is the main button. So I'm going to MIDI map this main button for looper here by clicking on it. So I did control M to MIDI map, clicking on it, clicking on my MIDI foot pedal in this case, and setting this so I can clear the loop and record into it. So now I've got four bars worth. I can grab my guitar and try and make sure I don't pull on any chords as I do this. I can now as I bump everything, start this up. So the default setting is it'll follow your tempo, so I can be like... And now it should be set to overdub. That wasn't super clean, but... I can hit that foot pedal again, which just clicks this, and now I can solo. All right. Lovely. And then I can hit the clear, and that's the basic looper setup. If instead of doing what I just did, if I just hit the record instead, then it would have recorded everything that was going in here clean initially so that I would have a copy of all of that audio. So I, I highly recommend leaving things record enabled and then hitting record so that when you hit tab to go over to your arrangement view, you would have stuff here. 
I'll show you a quick version of this. We'll set this to two bars just to see. And then I still have to hit the foot pedal or click the button to start my looper, but then we can do. To arrangement view, you can see we have all of this stuff here. We'll turn off the looper so we're not hearing what's in the looper. So this is just the original thing I played, not the looped version of it. So you can always produce that later. Uh, another nice thing is that you can drag the audio from the looper here, and this is our finished loop here. Don't want to send that back through the uh, through the amp again. That's what was going on there. We'll just we'll put it on the. Can I put it on the master? Or anyway, anyway whatever. Well. You get the idea. We've got the audio. So let's turn the looper back on. So that's one input thing. The next thing is if you want multiple inputs and multiple loopers, we'll go ahead and put just a marimba on this MIDI track here. So I'm just loading a preset with uh, MIDI stuff, and now I can press things. And so I could put a separate looper on here, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this up with two bars as well. You can have it be what you'd like here. Um, if you don't set it up with the bars, then you have to hit it at the end to let it know when you're done with your phrase. So. I frequently will do that as well. But for this demo, we're doing it this way. I'm going to have this mapped to the same keys so that they'll both start and stop at the same time. And now, and you can see on the left here, these notes are mapped to two separate things. Now what I can do is we will just erase everything over here and I'm gonna hit record. It's going to start its pre-roll. <laughs> Let's make sure to clear the, the looper first. So now the looper's cleared. And you didn't see that clearing, but I pressed the foot pedal that cleared it. So we'll start the record. It'll start the pre-roll. I'm hearing the metronome click so I can stay in time with it. And then when I want to, I can press the button here. here we've got all this stuff we've got the MIDI all the MIDI notes that went into the original thing recorded um, if I had had this monitor set to record I would have had all of the audio that was coming out on the master too so if you want like an actual just audio of what's going on you've got that you've got the guitar here and then you can come to either one of these things and pull out what was on the loop be like hey can we get that loop audio from the marimba or can we get that loop audio from the guitar. So there you go. We've got multiple inputs. You can fade them, you can adjust the volumes, etc. One last thing that I'll show at the risk of going a little bit long is let's say we want some other things. So let's say we want to put some drums on here. Uh, sure. So we'll load a drum kit, we'll arm this, we'll disarm this one. Got a drum kit. You can add on additional loopers and, and do it that way and loop into all of them. So that's probably what I'd recommend for most people just to have separate loopers and then just have them all going and record into whichever one you want. If you're trying to do A and B sections, then that can be a little tricky because now you need a looper and then another looper. And so doing audio buses can help with that. Um, 
one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a thing that I'm going to call looper. And I'm just going to send all the audio to here. Uh, so this is a different setup than the previous ones, um, but it's it's similar. So this looper we're going to get rid of. So any of the loopers on the tracks we're getting rid of. Now instead of sending to the master, I'm going to select all these tracks and send them to looper. Now looper we're going to have always monitoring uh, what's going in. We don't want an external in. We want it no input, just whatever's being sent from things. So you can still hear that. And now we'll make sure that we have our looper on there on the looper track with setup however we're doing it. Uh, make sure we can MIDI map that as before. And the advantage of doing it this way is now I can play this one and record it into the loop. And then when I want to, I can disarm it arm this other one, play it into the same loop. And so I can have a whole bunch, let's say eight of these MIDI instruments set up and I can just switch between them. And I actually have an APC 40 uh, Mark II that I use for this, but you can map this to whatever things you want. And this lets you arm and disarm as you'd like so that we can switch between those and have them go into the same loop. And that means that you can have it going to this looper, you could actually have an input audio bus here where you just take it into here and then take the audio from here into separate looper tracks. So you could have an A section and a B section. So I'm going to show you this way first that I have it set up. So this looper, we're going to hit record. So now it's going to be recording whatever's going on. I'm going to hit the looper section. Did I have it set to loop? Oh, I didn't. I didn't actually press the the button to to start the the recording. Take two. We're gonna do that again. Ready? Here we go. So we've got a loop going then anything else we want to put into that same loop we can do. Now, this won't be mixed. We won't be able to mix this after. got the monitor which is has the all of the audio so that's as we recorded it what it sounds like we've got for each individual thing we've got the MIDI for the marimba for the drums for whatever and then we've got um, actually yeah, recording that one wasn't doing anything because there wasn't anything coming in but if you had the if I had been playing audio while I was recording that then it would have come into that so the looper would get the audio of whatever you were doing coming in. And so that's pretty much the setup, the, the to getting the A and B sections. The only thing you do, I'll go ahead and show this. So looper B, you can have separate loopers here that are A and B. And these ones I recommend that you have triggered differently. So you're not like always looping into both. So looper A, you can have these have two separate ones and then what you do is you have an input bus input bus that now basically we just replace all of these things instead of going to looper a we're going to the input bus the input bus just takes whatever comes in there and always sends things along and then this will then send the audio you could have it sent to the master if you prefer if you're doing it that way, then you need to change some of the looper settings. So for us, we're going to do sends only. 
and we're going to pull audio from that input bus into either one of these. Right, so we're always getting audio coming through. Now, the, the difference here is that, um, the, yeah, it, it gets a little bit trickier here. But that, that's the basic idea. What I would actually do is I would have these set um, to record. You could have them in auto or just always in. Uh, but then the input bus I would have as going to the master. And then these loopers, I would not send input to the output. And the advantage of this is that we're not like doubling audio. So if we were to uh, make this so that we're only having sends, now you're not hearing anything, right? So we're not getting audio going to the master unless it's through a loop. So audio is going from our input bus, from wherever it is over here, input bus to the master. And then on the looper, it's only going to play back what's from the loop. And that's for doing A and B sections. So let's demo this real quick. Here I'll put this on a different button. And so now we have this on my one foot pedal, this one over here on my other foot pedal, I'll leave clear as the same. And let's change these to two bars instead to make this a little bit shorter. We'll hit clear to clear everything. And then what I can do, is I can hit record. We'll hit my looper to start my looper. Um, here we go. section. So what I can do is I can stop and you probably want to have this mapped to be able to stop and then I can hit to record in my B section. section, you can stop this, and then, and then go back to the A section. So that lets you have bridges, choruses, etc. using looper. Use whichever one makes sense for you. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming. I gave you a bunch of things, so just stop at whatever point it's accomplishing what you want it to accomplish. And let me know if you have questions, I guess. I don't know if I actually have a way for you to give me that feedback, but uh, hopefully that helps somebody.